you about your, your, your running mate. Um, I don't know if you saw, well, I saw the day that a news report broke that uh, Amy Klobuchar was being vetted and a lot of people on social media, they're not too happy about that. And um, it's because they want your running mate to be a black woman. I don't know if you saw the op-ed in the Washington Post by some of the leading black women voices in this country. And they feel since black women are such a loyal voting block and black people saved your political life in the primaries this year. They have things they want from you. And one of them is a black woman running mate. What, what do you say to them? What I say to them is that I'm not acknowledging anybody who is being considered, but I guarantee you there are multiple black women being considered. Uh, okay. <laughs> that kind of just, that kind of just was like, hey, uh, I'm just going to ignore all the women that are being considered. I'm not acknowledging anybody that's being considered. I understand what he was trying to say, but that phrasing was just so bad. <laughs> like, it's, like, it really just sounds like he's just like, I'm ignoring women. <laughs> Dude, just say, I haven't made a decision on who my vice presidential candidate is going to be. Uh, I'm, we're, we're, we're looking at, at them, uh, and we do have several black women that are, are in consideration. And once I have looked through all of, the, uh, all, of, all of the choices, I will make a decision based on skill, based on who I think would, uh, would, would represent the administration the best. Instead of, I'm not considering any of these women's voices because there's a lot of women's voices. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Uh Amy Klobuchar, by the way, if he chooses Amy Klobuchar, would 100 percent prove that Joe Biden does not give a shit about black America because uh Amy Klobuchar put an innocent black kid in prison. I did a video uh about this um I don't know, maybe back in February or something, maybe earlier than that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I have my notes from that here. It, his name was uh, uh, Mayan Burrell. He got a life sentence, uh, and there was a lot of shit that went wrong with the case. First and foremost, he was interrogated for eight hours without a per his mother. He maintained his innocent um, innocence, and then detectives were offering five hundred dollars. Uh, oh, uh, it, it was in regards to a, a murder of a, a a child, a murder of another child, right? And Myron Burrell is a is a minor. That, and he got a life sentence in prison. Um, and uh, detectives were offering like $500 and they weren't corroborating the information that they were getting. Um, she exploited this case. Uh, the Racial Justice Center in, uh, I believe, Minneapolis basically said that, uh, you know, she, her tough on crime bill is putting people in prison without any evidence. Um, my my and Burrell's mom passed away, and he was not allowed to attend her funeral. They they make these special provisions, special cases where you can attend certain things like funerals or birthdays, and and you know there'll be like a guard there or whatever. wasn't allowed to do it. Public safety, he's too dangerous. Uh, maintained his innocence the whole time. He was forced into signing a, a guilty plea deal uh, for a crime he didn't commit. Somebody actually came out and confessed to the crime. And uh, Amy Klobuchar, as the DA, uh, ignored it, said it was nothing, forced him to sign this plea deal, and basically fucking ruined this kid's life uh, to show that she was tough on crime. Uh, that's who Amy Klobuchar is. She's asked about this uh, uh, a bunch of times. Uh, the black community has called her out for absolutely no accountability. Um, she has backed up police officers that were accountable for killing innocent black kids, uh, innocent black people. Um, her staff also had the highest turnover rate because they couldn't deal with Amy Klobuchar's outbursts. Uh, so, yeah. If you, if you want to 100% say that you don't care about the black community, go ahead and pick Amy Klobuchar, who put an innocent black kid, mine Burrell, in prison for life when there was all of the evidence saying that he was guilt innocent. Let's continue. Multiple. Well, you know, Thanks so much. That's really our time. I apologize. You can't do that to black media. You I can't do that to white media and black media because my wife has to go on at six o'clock. Okay. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. 
Listen, you got to come see us when you come to New York, VP Biden. Cause I a, will. It's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. They don't have and there it is, folks. That's the moment. And by the way, he is super fucking proud of that joke. He is super incredibly proud of that statement, too. He basically went on uh, on The Breakfast Club. This has uh, almost a million views right now. Um, and he basically said uh, black Republicans are not black. He questioned black Republicans' blackness. Uh, and then in his head, Biden's like, nailed it. Fucking Joey B, you did it, buddy. You did it. You corn popped that joke. You nailed it, buddy. You nailed it, baby boy. Like he he is like I watch his face. Watch his face in the next couple seconds. Uh, while you pay attention to what Charlemagne is saying, because sure, that that's also that's also very important to to as to what the, you get it. Sorry, I'm 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 Joe Biden stumbling. Uh, <laughs> but let's let's keep going. I have nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the fact I want something for my community. I would love to see. Take a look at my record, man. I extended the voting racks twenty five years. I have a record that is second to none. The NAACP has endorsed me every time I've run. The war. I mean, come on. Take the NAACP does not endorse candidates. You guys, that's a huge lie that he just spewed out right there. Huge fucking lie. The NAACP, ha first of all, they've never endorsed Biden. Um, they don't endorse political candidates. They're a 5013C nonprofit uh, whose primary mission is the advancement of black communities across America. They don't endorse president. Like they, There have been multiple tweets and there have been multiple official statements put out by uh, various local chapter presidents that say this that they don't endorse presidential candidates. Over a million people have now viewed Joe Biden in another fucking lie about how much the black community loves him. He said that he, he was imprisoned with, with Nelson Mandela. What? This dude, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or not. But it's it's a huge fucking problem. Huge fucking problem. Derek Johnson, um, who's the president of the NAACP, uh, basically said he encourages Joe Biden to look into the struggles of black America and that they look forward to work with him if and when he becomes president. That they, they look forward to seeing his leadership and his plans and helping him execute his vision uh, to move black Americans forward. That's not an endorsement. That's that's just saying, hey, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing whether you can get this shit done. And, you know, like, if you need help, you know, we'll, we'll do our part. That's not saying we endorse you for president. And he basically, not just that, that, and that was just for 2020. He's saying that in his 36-year tenure, that and the NAACP has endorsed him every single time when they don't endorse political candidates at all. He just made this shit up, man. He just made this shit up, right? He made this shit up about, about the Nelson Mandela thing uh, and being super endorsed by the Dublin's N, uh, <laughs> NAACP. And while we're at it, you know, uh, while we're just making a bunch of shit up, I don't know if you guys know this or not. I don't know if you heard this or not, but I, 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 just, I just found this out doing my research is Joe Biden actually saved Lieutenant Dan in Vietnam. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Save Lieutenant Dan. The man could have lost his life. He just lost his legs. Uh, you know, that was because of Joey B. Joey B is right there. Okay. He also saved the galaxy uh, from a race of uh, superbugs. He did that. I if you, if you didn't get that reference, it's Starship Troopers. Uh, <laughs> it's a very deep cut reference, I understand. But uh, yeah. And this is the guy that's that's supposed to be more mentally fit than Donald Trump to be in office, who just spent 18 minutes yelling at a black man about his record that that a very calm, intelligent and stoic black entrepreneur pushed back on.
and all Joe Biden could do for 18 minutes was yell at this man, right? Take and a look at this, the record. All right, thank you so much. I really yeah. anyway, thanks. I will come back. All right, I look Please. forward to seeing you. He's in person. so excited. Okay, absolutely. I don't think Charlemagne's very excited about seeing him in person. I don't think Charlemagne's very excited about seeing seeing him in person. Um, before I, I want to look at your comments, uh, and I have uh, two more parts to cover before we wrap up today. Uh, but uh, he apologized the same way that Joe Biden apologizes by not saying "I'm sorry" and "I learned a lesson." Uh, he basically said, "I should have, I shouldn't have been uh, as cavalier as I was." Something to the effect of that, I, or I'm, I shouldn't have been so cavalier, right? I was a little bit too loose with my words. That's what Joe Biden said. Uh, which which translation means uh, I should be more careful about when I'm going to be racist. I shouldn't be so overtly and publicly racist. You know, racism is really uh, for you and that special loved one in a closed door uh, and money is being moved around between you and your donor class. That's where racism belongs, guys. Okay? In a very private, intimate setting. His apology basically is, I need to be more careful about where and when I'm going to be racist. Where I'm going to say uh, this weird shit. This is who he is, by the way, I think. Um, he is an angry man that can't, be cha that, that can't be challenged. That has a problem with being challenged. Kind of sounds like Trump. Whenever you challenge Trump, he does some weird childish thing and then he goes into name calling. Joe Biden just adjusts. He just starts yelling at you and reciting and then tells you you don't understand him. A few weeks ago, uh, a, a bunch of my kind of smushy liberal friends and, and Democrats, I know I'm being mean, my, I, I, you know, my, the, the, the liberal folks that I'm friends with, um, they kind of came at me because I posted a YouTube comment from a prior Joe Biden video, uh, a very racist YouTube comment from a prior Joe Biden video. And they just couldn't, they just couldn't understand, oh, it's got to be, this must be a Trump supporter. Oh, it can't be a liberal. Joe Biden just said, if you don't vote for Democrats, you're not black. And then basically his apology was like, I need to be quieter about my racism. And you can't believe that there might be some Joe Biden fans that would tell a, a brown comedian who does political commentary to go eat curry and not talk about politics because that's what that comment said. And they just couldn't believe it. I travel all across the country and the last five years, uh, minimum the last five years I've had I, and I know I say this quite often, but I really want to reiterate this point I've had more conservatives come to my show and tell me Huh, I never thought about it that way Explain to me their viewpoints and beliefs and we might have our disagreements But we can still be respectable about it and I've had more liberals more of these smushy liberals more of these Good boy Democrats that are gonna vote blue no matter who that will angrily leave a show or desperately try to convince me that I need to vote for a party that has no interest in helping me out, no interest in looking at what I'm going through and legislating on the behalf of the people. And then if I don't, I'm a fascist. I'm, I'm overprivileged. That's what they say. That's what they tell to me. I'm, I have too much white privilege. That's why I can't vote any blue, no matter who. Guys, I grew up in this country under the Bush era and the Obama era, I grew up under the largest deportations when a Democrat was president. I grew up under the Patriot Act. I grew up under NSA surveillance. We all did. It don't matter who's in that office. If it's a corporate candidate, yeah, they're going to fuck you over. I'm going to read an MLK quote that I've read before because it's important. It's a Martin Luther King Jr. quote uh, about, about white moderates, about the moderate liberal. Uh, and warning, there is a, a word that some people might consider uncouth. But again, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was in the 60s where this world kind of has a, has a different context. So I'm just kind of getting that out there. Uh, but this is an MLK quote. Uh, and it says, I must confess that over the past few years, I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's greatest stumbling block 
in his stride towards freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to positive peace, which is the presence of justice. This is, uh, this is, Joe Biden is who MLK is talking about. He is the white moderate, the white liberal that is trying to uh, get rid of the tension. You know, hey, just do what, I, do what I'm saying. I'm a liberal. I'm a good guy. Just do what I'm saying. Trust me, it's going to be good. And when you push back against them, they get pissed. Same thing with, with the people that support him. Um, not all people. There, a percentage of Joe Biden's supporters will come out and they will make these you know, these, these, uh, over the top comments and they're choosing complacency rather than real progress. And that's a damn shame in my opinion. While we're on the topic of justice, while we're talking about the crime bill in what portion of the crime bill and what portion of anything that Joe Biden legislated for, uh, you know, to, to prevent more criminality in this country, where in, in, in any of these bills, does it say, What's going to happen to the bankers that caused the financial crash of 08 or the bankers that are causing the recession now? Is that in there? Or is it just continuing to put more poor and black people in prison? Uh, I want to look at the, uh, the comment section before we get to our, uh, our, our, our final uh, little segment of this of this thing here. Uh, Danny, yes, please look at his <laughs> record of FFs. Yeah, uh, they're bad. Jay, the statement came out of nowhere. There was no context. It was apropos of literally nothing. Charlemagne was wrapping up the interview. He was off the hook. All he had to say was nothing, and we wouldn't be talking about this. He made this bet all by himself. He absolutely did. Um, and and all he all Charlemagne said is that he wants something positive for the black community which challenged Joe Biden because what what Charlemagne is saying is there are a lot of things in your record that showed the opposite and Joe Biden has to prove unequivocally that he is excellent for the black community regardless of the fact that his record shows quite the opposite and he did make this bet him he could have just shut the fuck up but he can't he treats he treats oppositional journalism the same way that Trump treat, treats oppositional journalism. When you question Trump and push back against Trump, he does the same shit. He it's just there is more insults levied and more more I think uh, direct racist comments rather than these weird sort of like wait what the fuck was that kind of and and then it hits the internet right. Danny, Joe Biden can't comprehend the struggles. That's the problem. Yeah, and you know, it's very strange because you would figure that somebody that has Joe Biden's background of growing up in a working class family where, you know, it, it, where he had to hit poverty a couple times when he was a kid, apparently that's the story, that he would understand the struggles, that he would know what, what poor people need. But he doesn't. You're right. He does not. Uh, we need to stop asking old cis white male politicians to look out for the best interests of black, brown, LGBTQ, and women constituents, Democrat or no. They never have, they never will, and we have got to change this. I agree, absolutely. Uh, look at your local, look at your local uh, candidates. How many of them are from your communities? How many of them are from the working class world? We saw AOC. I'll, I'll give AOC that she, she matches the identities and she also, once again, speaks to a lot of the belief systems that I have, but she has bent the knee to Nancy Pelosi a few too many times. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of it. I got to be honest. You know, it, it upsets me deeply to see that sort of stuff happen. Uh, but Jay's, Jay's right. They're not going to bend. They're not going to change. They are going to look for muddied interests. There, there needs to be a new breed of politician that is not looking for muddied interests and does kind of show the diversity that's actually representative of this country. Uh, and, and it's up to us to, to, 
to push those candidates, right? To And it's okay to challenge the people that we like, right? So if you are a Joe Biden supporter, you should look at this and be like, this is a bad look. And his apology is half-hearted at best. And, and this should question whether or not Joe Biden is the right guy for you or not. And that's okay. I questioned a bunch of shit that Bernie Sanders did. I questioned a bunch of shit that Tulsi Gabbard did. Um, you know, uh, and that's okay. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to do that. Bernie Sanders and Tulsi endorsed Joe Biden. And I was just like, what the fuck is this all about? Andrew Yang did the same thing. But, and that, but you should be able to challenge your leaders. That's our right as citizens. That's part of our rights as citizens. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel for, uh, for more. There's going to be daily videos going up uh, on this channel. Uh, I am also uh, going to be performing virtual live stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. Uh, I've done a couple of these, and they've been super, super fun. So thank you to all the people that have already purchased tickets and uh, come out to these shows on a regular basis. They're, they're pretty fun. I'm going to be doing them every single Friday in the month of June. Tickets are available for those right now on my website at krishmohan.com. So it's June 5th, June 12th, June 19th, and June 26th, going at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, if you're in the other time zones, I think you can figure out what, what time that <laughs> these shows are going to be on. Uh, they are going to be, each show is going to be a little bit different. They're going to be covering topics like the one uh, in the video that you just watched. Uh, again, you can grab your tickets at krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N every Friday at June, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and uh, if you are a sustaining member, you get a free ticket to every single one of these shows. Uh, and you can become a sustaining member over uh, on my website as well. And uh, I, know I know times are tough, uh, so if you are in a financially precarious situation, please send me a message uh, or an email, and I will happily give you a code that will get you a, uh, a free ticket to attend these shows. Uh, I'm also releasing my brand new stand-up comedy album, which if you're a sustaining member, you get an early uh, early release version of, early, uh, early copy of. Uh, it is available on my Bandcamp page to pre-order right now, and it comes out June 1st. So you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com, get, uh, get your copy of it uh, for only a dollar. You can pre-order it for only a buck. If you want to donate a little bit more, that would be awesome as well. Uh, there are more videos like this coming up. I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, a bunch of live streams pretty regularly from my Facebook page and uploading and releasing videos via the YouTubes and uh, and the, on the audio podcast versions as well. So stay tuned. Make sure that you like, make sure that you share, and make sure that you're subscribed to these pages because content like this often gets uh gets suppressed so uh thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for hanging out and uh till the next one we'll see you on the road thanks